For this lab, we are going to be building our breadboard, and this breadboard is going to be for this chip that we have here. And this is our STM32F303 Nuclear32 that we have been using. The code for this, because we're going to need to actually code this to make it output specific um, results, is going to be in the next video, linked below the like button. But for this one, we're just going to be wiring this up. So we have our board here, right here, and then we have our micro circuit here. And then we have six LEDs that we're gonna need. We're gonna have red, yellow, and green because we're going to make a kind of stop light, finite state machine using more, but that'll be go gone over in the next video. We have a little push button. If you don't have this though, you can easily just jump the wires and short circuit it so it'll work. We have a one kilo ohm resistor, and 330 ohm resistors that are going to act as um, pull-ups or pull-downs to pull the voltage down. We also have some jumper wires so that we can connect everything. The first thing I'm going to do is plug this into the board. So we're going to take this and push into the pins. Now you're going to meet some heavy resistance when you're plugging this into the board right about here. And you're really going to want to push it down very firmly. Be careful not to press on the pins probably want to press on somewhere more firm for the board. So once that's pressed down, we can start installing our other things. Now we want all six of our LEDs, right? So we want the current to flow into the anode and out of the cathode. The anode is the longer side, the cathode is the shorter side, and the cathode is also indicated with a little notch right here. So it's not fully circular all around. And so we can plug this in. How I'm going to want to wire this and wire it differently, this top rail is going to be the ground rail. And so I know that after this, we are going to have a resistor that pulls it to ground. So I'm going to want to connect this as so. The positive the current is going to flow, or the current, no positive or negative, the current is going to flow into our LED this way. So I'm going to plug it in to the breadboard just like this, and it's going to go across the column. So it's fit in like this. And now we're going to do the same thing for the other ones. Now the order for this does matter, but it only matters for our code. It doesn't matter for when we're actually wiring up this breadboard because it won't affect whether it works or not. Make sure all the leads are correct. Otherwise there will be a problem later and you'll have to debug it. And when you're using breadboards, you want to take your time and plug in everything correctly. That way you don't have to go back and debug it later because debugging something like this can take a lot of time. So I'm just spacing it out just so I have enough room in between each of these. Again, even I am double checking each of these just to make sure I'm putting them in the correct spots. Um, the gap isn't necessarily important. I'm just leaving a gap to leave a gap. The color order is only important for when we code this so that it acts like a stoplight. But again, it's not going to affect our circuit. We can notice that some of these LEDs are shorter and we can see that some of these resistors are also really short compared to ones that I previously used and that's because I've cut them just to make them shorter so they fit closer and nicely to the breadboard. Now from here, each of these are going to have a 330 and it doesn't have to be exactly 330 ohm resistor, but something that is in the low hundreds of resistance, it, it could be even uh, slightly higher ohms of resistance. That way we can pull the, we can have the extra current go to ground. And so we don't destroy our um, LED. And so we're going to wire these all into the negative rail. That means that my negative rail is going to be the grounding rail. And so I'm going to put all these in here. I need to double check that because I couldn't see it. But all these resistors, they're going to be connected into the same column as the LEDs. You're going to want to double check that just so you don't like break your breadboard or anything. But these are going to go oops, into the same column, and they're all going to go into the negative. Super important that we do this correctly, again, because we don't want to hurt our LEDs, because we are going to be sending, I believe, 3 volts into it, because we're using the 3 volt from the um, power pin from our uh, Nucleo 32. And so this is in the right column, this is in the right column, and then this is going to go into ground as well. So now we can double check our connections. We can see that this one is grounded, this one is grounded, this one is grounded, 
this one is grounded. This last one is grounded. Or the middle one's grounded, and also this last one is grounded. So once we've checked all of our connections, we can actually ground this. We can see if we look at our Nucleo 32, we have a GND right here. And that is the second to the last pin on the left side. And that stands for ground. So what we're going to do is if you have your breadboard, or if you have this slot into the very last column, the very farthest that you can, it's obviously going to be the second column. So we're going to take this small cable that we have, we're going to go from our ground into our same column as the ground that our Nucleo 32 is in, because that's how breadboards work. And so plugging it in, we have now grounded our entire negative rail. Now, certain breadboards will have a break in the middle. This one does not, fortunately. But if it has a break, all we would need to do is connect a jumper wire in between to continue the current flow. From here, we're going to need to wire our little push button. Now, just for convenience, I'm going to um, have the bottom like this placed over here. Now, from here, we are going to have a 1 kilo ohm resistor, and it's going to go right here to pull away some of that current. And from here, we can start wiring things up. Now, we know that we want our um, D13, and if we are to look at a data sheet for this, the pinout online, it's going to be very, very simple to find. All we need to look up is like Nucleo 32F303 pinout. We can go on the website. Should be like maybe the first link or one of the images. You can go on their website and look it up but the pinout for it is going to tell us where we want to hook these things up. And so our pinout is going to have us hook it up into the D, is this 13? So we're going to go from there D13, and when we code this, this is going to be input, right? Because we're taking input, and this is going to go into the same column as our resistor back here. So that is how that is going to be loaded. Next, we want to actually power this. We want to send power to our button, because without power, this is not going to work. So we're going to put that in the same column as our 3 volt power supply. We can see it says 3V3. That's the 3 volt pinout. And so now it's going to go into here, into the same column as the other side of our button right here. And so this is now an open circuit. When we close this, it's going to make a short circuit. The current is going to flow into our D13. So our D13, um, remember, when we plug this in, the power is going to go through this red current, this, through this red wire. The current's going to go through the red wire. It's going to go into here. And this is an open circuit, so it's not going to go anywhere. When we push it, we close the circuit. And then we have some current going to ground here, because we don't need all of it. The rest is going to go through this blue wire. It's going to go into here, which is our input. And then we're going to have these jumper wires act as output, right? So they're going to be connected to these columns, which are going to output current to all of our LEDs. So now let's wire it up. So from here, I'm going to color code these. We have this green one here. It's going to go to um, the pins up here. Now, it doesn't exactly matter which pin, well, it kind of matters which pins you plug them in, but you just got to remember it for when you code it. The super easy, easy pins that I'm going to be using are going to be the A0, the A1, and A2. And then on the bottom, I'm going to be using the D12, the D11, and the D10 as well. So with those in use, we can start plugging these in. This is going to go into our A0. We're going to skip a pin because in the middle is our REF, which is reference, which we don't need. Next, we have this yellow wire. So we're going to put it into the same column as our yellow LED. Be careful to check the connections, make sure they're all correct. It's going to go in here. And then we have this red one. So this red one is going to go in here and then it's gonna go into our A2. And so it should look something like this now. So now we can look at these ones. And these ones are gonna be the same thing, but for the other pinout. And so the green is gonna to go to our D13, or sorry, the D12, that's a D12 right there. The very last pin is a D12. And then our yellow is gonna go into the D11. And then our red is going to go into the D10. Now, when we code it, it's a little bit different. The pin versus what we're actually, um, the actual parts that we're looking at on our circuit. So just keep that in mind. And we'll look at that in the next video.
But that is it really for this one. Just a quick overview. When we power this on, when we plug this in, we send power to here. What's going to happen is that power is going to go from this 3v3. It's going to go through this. It's going to go into our switch. It's going to go through here and into our switch. Now, from the switch, it's going to be an open circuit, so no current's going to flow through. Once we push this, it's going to become a closed circuit. Some of the current is going to go through this resistor. The rest is going to travel through here and into our board. And it's going to act as inputs. This is our input. This is user input, right? And so from this input, we have these other pins. We have these three pins up here. We have these three pins down here. They're going to act as output. And so current is going to flow through these and into our LEDs, powering them. The excess current is going to flow into ground with this ground rail. And so that is it for our breadboard. Next, we're going to be coding for this. And we might even come back just to see the results from a red board. But that is it for this part.